When it comes to A-B testing, there are a bunch of mistakes that can hurt the accuracy and effectiveness of your experiments. In this video, we cover eight of them. First is including users in your experiment who aren't actually affected by the change you are testing. This dilutes your experiment results, making it harder to determine the impact of your change. For example, you are testing a new feature to reward users for uploading a file for the first time. If you aren't careful, you can include users who have already uploaded a file. These users aren't affected by the change, and the data they create might hurt the accuracy of your experiment. This code example would be incorrect because we call the feature flag before filtering users who have already uploaded a file. We can fix this by filtering the users first, then calling our experiments feature flag. Second is only viewing results in aggregate, also known as Simpson's paradox. It is possible for aggregated experiment data to show different results than experiment data broken into subgroups. For example, suppose you are testing your signup flow and get the following results in favor of your test variant. Breaking down the visitors into desktop and mobile could show that the test worked much better on mobile, but worse on desktop, something that is missed without doing this breakdown. Other breakdowns you might want to check include user tenure, location, subscription size, org size, acquisition channel, and user role. Third is conducting an experiment without a predetermined duration. Doing this may cause you to fall victim to the peaking problem when you check the intermediate results for statistical significance, make decisions on them, and end your experiment too early. Without determining how long your experiment should run, you cannot differentiate between intermediate and final results. You can use POSOG's A-B test running time calculator to figure out how long you should run your experiment for. At four is running an experiment without testing it first. Sometimes we're so eager to get the results from our experiment, we jump straight to running them on all our users. This is fine if everything's set up correctly, but if you've made a mistake, you might not be able to rerun your experiment. This is because rerunning experiments can show the same change to the same users, making your results unreliable. Imagine an experiment you are running causes a crash for some test users. When you stop the experiment, fix the issue, and rerun it, many users have likely already seen the change and will act differently when they see it again. To avoid this, test your experiment with a small rollout, like 5% of users, for a few days. Check that the metrics and session replays look good. Once you're confident everything works correctly, roll out further. Fifth is countermetrics. Countermetrics measure unintended negative side effects of your experiments. If you do not monitor them, you might roll out changes that create a worse overall experience in an overlooked area. For example, say you are testing a change on the signup page. The experiment might show that it improves conversion, but counter metrics show it decreases time spent in app. This might be a sign that your new signup page misleads users about what your app does and could lead to more churn in the future. Sixth is not accounting for seasonality. Seasonal changes can cause significant changes in users' behavior. People might take time off, focus on different tasks, or have other priorities, depending on the time of year. For example, companies often have specific times of year when they allocate budgets, review contracts, and make purchasing decisions. Conducting A-B tests during this time may not represent typical user behavior. Some seasonal changes to be aware of include religious and regional holidays, as well as summer vacation, fiscal year-end, sales cycles, and industry events. Seventh is testing an unclear hypothesis. Having a clear definition of what you are testing and why helps you determine which metrics to measure and analyze. An example of a bad hypothesis is changing the color of the proceed to checkout button will increase purchases. This is unclear why we are testing the changes and why we expect it to increase results. As a result, it is unclear what we need to measure. Do we only need to track button clicks or something else as well? To make this a good hypothesis, we can change it to user research showed that users are unsure how to proceed to the checkout page. Changing the button's color will lead more users to notice it and thus more people proceeding to the checkout page. This will lead to more purchases. 
This makes it clear that we need to track both the button clicks to show if the color change helps more people notice it and purchases to show more people are arriving on the checkout page. This also makes it easier to investigate when results aren't as expected. For example, if the color change doesn't show an increase in clicks, the page likely has a different problem. The last common A-B testing mistake is relying too much on A-B tests for decision making. Not everything that can be measured matters, and not everything that matters can be measured. It's important to remember that there are other reasons for shipping things besides metrics changes, such as solving pain points or creating better user experiences. As an example, Raquel from our growth team ran an experiment on our signup page to make social login buttons more prominent. While it resulted in more people signing up using Google and GitHub, overall signups and activation didn't increase. She ultimately decided to ship the change since we felt social login lowers friction and provides a better user experience. That's all for this video on common A-B testing mistakes. If you have any thoughts or a mistake I missed, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this and check out the written version of this video and more at postdoc.com blog. Thanks for watching.